Want to know the secret to a great night's sleep? It's Purple. Why? Because only Purple mattresses have the Gel Flex grid. It's the reason why Purple mattresses are soft where you want it, firm where you need it, and instantly respond to movement. The Gel Flex grid flexes around pressure points to support your whole body, no matter how you sleep. Plus, the Gel Flex grid is 80% air. It breathes, so you're not too hot or too cold. Learn more about Purple mattresses and the Gel Flex grid at purple.com. Purple, reinventing sleep. This is the Friends of History Debating Society. I'm John Bachelor. I welcome Professor H.J. McIndor, International Relations, to comment on breaking headlines about Russia and energy. This is Bloomberg. World's energy chaos turns Russia into top emerging market pick. Surging energy prices goes the story. Are kindling bullish bets on developing nation exporters with Russia emerging as the trader's favorite investment destination. The Russian ruble has gained more than any other emerging market currency in this last month, bolstered by the prospect of higher oil revenues while the nation's stocks outperformed as a broad gauge. Further, this marks an abrupt change of pace for emerging markets investors who've spent the last few weeks alternately worried over delinquencies such as Evergrande in China and the central banker's tightening policy. Now, celebration from Russia to Colombia, it's time to go back into emerging markets. And Russia, the pivot nation, the heartland, not only are there gas lines, petrol lines, in Great Britain around London, not only are there prospects of all of Europe having a very cold winter because natural gas shipments are not up to what is the demand for the manufacturing and home heating, but also... China has been experiencing rolling blackouts these last days and weeks, and Chinese manufacturing has slowed down, we're told, in 10 provinces. Professor, a very good evening to you. Russia, after the 20th century, was regarded as a basket case to be renovated. But here, in 2021, the investor class is celebrating Russia as critical to the success of Europe and the uh, the success of China and its uh, accompanying markets in East Asia. Did we see this coming, Professor? Good evening to you. Good evening. I don't think we saw it coming, although it's going to be very hard to explain why we did not, because we have had the hard figures on how much energy is imported into Germany, uh, into England, into India, into uh, Japan and uh, so forth, uh, and into China for a long time. And it's been clear that, uh, that this quantity was increasing and that steps were not being taken to deal with it. Uh, so this is something which, in a way, every, we should say we saw it coming, but we didn't. And suddenly, Mr. Putin uh, whom people didn't pay much attention to, is seated on the throne at the heart of Europe, at the center of Eurasia, as the emperor of energy, the only one who has energy and hard money and not debt. At the same time, this is the Russia that has been castigated and sanctioned these last years because of, and there's a library of offenses uh, dating at least since 2014, if not before, the Ukraine issue. Do you see this influencing those sanctions? Is Mr. Putin bold in a position to say, I'm giving you heat for your winter, and what are you going to do for me? Well, this, in many ways, has been the, this was the strategy between, behind Nord Stream that enables Russia to keep giving energy to Germany while cutting off uh, Eastern Europe. They've always known that they have this capacity, and uh, in many ways, the ability to turn the heat on and off is more useful than having uh, a million H-bombs. So I have no doubt that Russia will make diplomatic use of this. 
However, I do not see Russia as sort of insanely ambitious to reassert status in the way that I see China, which is behaving very, very provocatively and dangerously. I think certainly Russia has done some terrible things, but we don't hear a whole lot about, uh, we, we got a lot of oil from Saudi Arabia and, uh, You know, they're not up to any good uh, when it comes to human rights in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Because Russia is in a position to bargain, and of course the revenue is going to flow, it also suggests that Russia is important to Germany with the Nord Stream 2, to France, which depends upon nuclear energy for its electricity, but it depends upon natural gas for heating, and especially to Great Britain. Do you think that this will move Russia and London closer, Russia and Berlin, Moscow and Berlin closer? Well, I think it probably will. And frankly, uh, I believe that Russia should be more thoroughly integrated into European politics than she is now. I think of the days of the Tsar, the Russian foreign minister would always have been at meetings. Russia was one of the great powers. And I think particularly after Mr. Putin has exited uh, the scene, there is a possibility that Russia will become a uh, far more normal and functional country politically and diplomatically than she is today. Uh, I think it's good if these countries have close relations. Obviously, I don't want them blackmailing each other. And now we move to Mr. Putin himself who personalizes Russia as an energetic, fit, but extremely military culture. Uh, Certainly the provocations in Ukraine, the provocations along the Baltic states, the adventures in Syria suggest that Russia sees its military as a diplomatic tool. Do you believe the dependence upon Russian energy will move Europe to back away from demands over Ukraine to be settled and that the European Union will allow this matter to be worked out between Moscow and Kiev? Well, I think that what we're really talking about is that this energy crisis and Russia's new central role are going to be the framework in which a thorough reorganization of international geopolitics takes place. I think that's going to be true in Asia. I think it's going to be true in Europe and uh, Russia. It's going to affect NATO. It's going to affect all kinds of things. But I think that because in the end it's about energy, uh, that it may not lead to war. I'm a perpetual optimist. But I, I think that this may be the precipitating event for a lot of thinking and rearranging that we should have been doing 30 years ago. A Nobel Peace Prize goes to a journalist, a prominent journalist in Russia, Dmitry Muratov, who is said to be the editor-in-chief of the Russian main opposition newspaper. Now, Mr. Putin does not welcome opposition. The most recent Duma election suggests that his party has total command of not only the media, but also the way votes are counted. I know that particularly they voted online in Moscow, which... <laughs> Uh, turned around the election results dramatically for several posts in and around Moscow. I'll leave that alone and just say that Mr. Putin is no friend of transparency when it comes to the vote. However, Muratov is the editor of a newspaper where a number of his journalists have been murdered these last years, unknown, unsolved crimes. Do you see Mr. Putin regarding this Peace Prize as an insult, or will he embrace it? He has already embraced it most gracefully, uh, saying that Novaya Gazeta, which he must uh, absolutely despise, and its founder and so forth are great Russians. He's handled it the way the leader of a great country does. He said, yes, this reflects well on all of us. And uh, if I may defend Mr. Putin a little bit, I think that he is... He is working within a constitutional system. Russia has a real constitutional system. Now, he isn't, doesn't let this get in his way, but he uses criminal methods and deceptions and uh, 
skullduggery to get around it, whereas, say, in China, they change the Constitution. Russia has a Constitution, and when Mr. Putin finally exits, there's a possibility that this well-designed Constitution can actually function. So uh, I, I, I give him the credit for choosing criminality uh, rather than government restructuring. Finally, the question about China, the rolling blackouts, the cutback in ability to manufacture and move to market. The future of China depends upon energy. And right now, the story is, do they have enough? Do they have sources? There is information that Russia is going to help China's energy shortfall. Heretofore, the presumption has been that the these two countries, the duo, have been working together to establish their authority in Eurasia, the world island, the vastness of it all, from the, Met, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. However, the fact that China is energy poor and Russia is energy rich, does this flip the relationship? Well, this is one of the several factors that flip the relationship. Uh, Russia will never tolerate a China that's going to interfere with her two main bases in Asia, Kamchatka and Vladivostok, or start interfering with her control of the northern uh, part of Eurasia. Uh, so the idea that they're going to be best buddies is incorrect. Or they have quite conflicting geopolitical interests. Uh, second, uh, it's clear that Russia now has the upper hand. Mr. Xi has officially said that from now on, he is going to follow Russia, take Russia's lead. Russia is going to be the big brother because he's realized that China has effectively uh, alienated all of her other potential allies. Uh, but the Russians are just going to take as much of this as they want. They're going to have a client state, but they're not going to want that client state to be starting conflicts with the United States or Japan or India or any of these other places. So China has, by dint of this, terrible miscalculation on her part. She's ended her economic miracle, and she's also ended the possibility uh, that she is going to somehow become the, uh, the leader of the world. Uh, the Chinese economic miracle, which was always illusory to a high degree, is, I, I would say, it's over. And we're returning to normal. What we're going to see now is a rather thorough reorganization of much of the world system. And it's only natural uh, that Russia, which is the country that borders both Europe and the Pacific, and that Russia should have a key role in that. Professor, so I'm somewhat optimistic about this. Professor H.J. Mackinder, International Relations. Russia is the pivot nation. Russia is the heartland. This is Friends of History Debating Society. I'm John Batchelor. Want to know the secret to a great night's sleep? It's purple. Why? Because only purple mattresses have the Gel Flex grid. It's the reason why purple mattresses are soft where you want it, firm where you need it, and instantly respond to movement. The Gel Flex grid flexes around pressure points to support your whole body, no matter how you sleep. Plus, the Gel Flex grid is 80% air. It breathes, so you're not too hot or too cold. Learn more about purple mattresses and the Gel Flex grid at purple.com. Purple, reinventing sleep. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. Get $150 back when you get gig speed internet. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Ends 11-121. Restrictions apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X5 gateway. Actual speeds vary.